You may remain seated. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, by ourselves, we can only lose the battle against our sins and the devil and lose heaven. You have won the battle for us, and you give us the prize of heaven because you love us. We will sing your praises now and forever. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, God's word before us this morning is found in the words of Psalm 118. You can tell there's quite a difference between the length of the words that we say. Um, the words that we say were only just a portion of Psalm 118. Uh, this morning, I'm preaching on the entire psalm. You can find that entire psalm printed. You know, I've learned something in, in my experiences going through life, that every exit is also an entrance. Every time you walk out of something, you walk into something. You and I, we got into this world by dying in the womb. And it must have been a painful experience, none of us can remember. But it must have been a painful experience being ripped out of that familiar place. But that was the prerequisite for getting into time and space. You know that at the end of our lives in history, there's going to be a similar kind of a transition experience. And if we can get at the terror of death <coughs> by saying it's a transformer rather than a destroyer, then also we can get rid of the idea that death is a thief and is taking something that is rightfully ours, which is the basis of all our fears and all our terror. We look at God's word this morning. God reminds us of a beautiful truth, that the gates, the entrance of heaven, the gates of righteousness are open by all our Savior offered for us, suffered for us, and by all our Savior won for us. Psalm 118 is a, a beautiful psalm. It's a psalm that is actually the assigned psalm for this morning. It's also one that we sing and use on Easter Sunday itself. This psalm was first used by God's people in a variety of important connections in their worship life thousands and thousands of years ago. Psalm 118, together with the three psalms that come before it, was a group of psalms that were known as the Hallel, the praise the Lord psalms, the give thanks to the Lord psalms. And this group of psalms were ones that were sung or read, very often sung in the homes of people, as they celebrated the Passover. And it was at the end that they would sing these psalms of praise and thanks to God, helping to keep them mindful for all of the blessings that he had given them for their entire lives, especially as they were remembering deliverance from slavery in Egypt. Now, this psalm was probably, very likely, the one of the last, probably the last song that Jesus and his disciples sang as they left that upper room on Monday, Thursday, to go to the Garden of Gethsemane. And when you think about these words, how fitting they were for Jesus and the disciples, knowing what was to come. Okay? This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Thinking about, again, those precious words, the, 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 everything that was going to happen. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteousness, righteous may enter. My strength and my song is the Lord, and he has become salvation for me. Loud shouts of victory are in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has done mighty deeds. The right hand of the Lord is lifted high. The light right hand of the Lord has done a mighty deed. I will not die, no, I will live, and I will proclaim the works of the Lord. These were words that Jesus and the disciples were singing, and how fitting, what a comfort, what a source of strength. 
knowing that Jesus' arrest was going to come, that his disciples were going to abandon him, that Jesus would be beaten, that he would die brutally upon the cross and suffer not only death, but hell for the sins of all mankind. This was something that was terrifying not only for Jesus, but also the witness for his disciples. What words of comfort in Scripture. Now, this psalm was not only used during the Passover, it was also sung in the temple for uh, uh, one of the gathering feasts, one of the big major religious holidays for the Jewish people. They had, uh, there, were, there were feasts, festivals, that every Jew was required to come to the temple for during the course of the year. There was the Passover, there was the Day of Atonement, there was the Festival of Pentecost, which was a harvest festival, which pointed ahead to the harvest of souls. And then there was this one, one that took place in the fall as well. It was called the Festival of Tents, or Tabernacles. And in this festival, what the people did was they were required to uh, they were required to live in tents for the for a period of eight days, from one Sabbath to another. They weren't allowed to live in their homes, but they had to go out and live in these little booths, these little tents, camping out for a week. You might be thinking to yourself, what was the purpose for that? Okay, because you know, as I when, when, if I was a kid, it, that would be. Um, but being in my mid fifties right now, I kind of like to have my bed, some blankets, all of the conveniences a whole for a whole week. What was the purpose? This was to remind God's people of their will, of their wandering in the wilderness, and how God was with them. They had their tents as they were wandering in the wilderness, coming from Egypt to the Promised Land. The temple was in their midst, and that was also a tent. But it was a reminder that the, that, that, that place of worship that was in their center, God was with them as they were going on their journey, and that they would be with him forever and ever. This was a reminder. And Jesus speaks about this in the, in the book of Revelation, as God's people are taken to heaven, that God in heaven stretches out his tent over us, and we will be with him forever. These were the things that were going through the minds of God's people when they were first singing this song of worship during the Passover, during the festival of, of tabernacles and booths, living outside. And no wonder it is something that's so important for us, and it's fitting because really all of those festivals were the fulfillment, found their fulfillment in Jesus, in the resurrection of Easter. We too can sing out with the, with the psalm writer and the believers of old, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Something that God's people have often sung on Sunday mornings. In reference to going to God's house to hear his word, to receive the forgiveness of sins, to receive the sacrament, his body and blood. Keeping in mind, too, that every time we gather for worship on Sunday morning, that we're celebrating Easter, even though it might not be Easter Sunday. Because Sunday is that day that Jesus rose from the dead. Every time, every Sunday morning is a celebration of the resurrection. This is the day of the Lord is let us rejoice and be glad. That's where we find our joy. This is what the Lord has done for us. You know, and as I think about the words of these songs, they were sung before all of the they were sung while all of the events that Jesus fulfilled were going on. At the end of the psalm, they were words that we didn't sing, but they're words of the psalm. And it says here, the psalm writer says, Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will give thanks to the Lord. He says, O Lord, please save us now. O Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
We bless you from the house of the Lord. Do you remember hearing those words before? Do you remember you were here on Palm Sunday, hearing the crowds of Jerusalem saying these very words? Most of them anyway. The first words I read here just recently were translated for us. Lord, save us. We hear them shouted on Palm Sunday, Hosanna, which means, Lord, save us. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. As those people, those people saw, recognized in this psalm, that this would be fulfilled by the Messiah, by the Savior. That's why they acknowledged him as the one that was to come. Lord, save us. And then this is the gate through which the righteous may enter. Jesus. Jesus says, I am the gate. The gate of righteousness. The gate to eternal life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The truth of salvation by faith in Christ alone. You know, it's part of the human sinful nature to think this that there is something that we can contribute to get into heaven. Something that we can think we can do for God that says, oh, he's going to credit this for my salvation. No. The only thing that we can contribute is our sin. And the only reward for that is hell. But Jesus is the gate of righteousness. That the righteous enter him by faith. Faith, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. What a blessing that is. And that gate of righteousness, when you think about it, it, are the gates to heaven. This is what carries us on from day to day. Knowing that we are just visitors here. And while there are many, many wonderful things and blessings that God brings to us, that there is something greater that lies ahead. We wait for eternal life. We wait for that blessed, happy reunion in heaven because that is what God has made us for. That is what God has brought us to faith for. That is what he prepares us for every time we gather around his word and sacrament. What a blessing that the gates of righteousness are open. Did you ever hear the one about the bus driver and the pastor. They both died and went up to heaven, standing at the pearly gates. The bus driver is first in line, and St. Peter says to him, Welcome, my son. He says, Welcome to the eternal reward. And he points up to the top of a large mountain in heaven. And there is a beautiful palace, a beautiful mansion, and he says to the bus driver, he says, there, go. There is your eternal glory for eternity. So the pastor's standing there thinking to himself, wow, he got a palace. I can't even imagine where I'm going. And so St. Peter says to the pastor, over there, over there, down there in that little wooded valley, there's a little tent with a bonfire next to it. Tent had holes in it. It looked like it had been there forever. Not a very pleasant place at all. The pastor says to St. Peter, Are you out of your mind? He says, That's where you're going to put me for eternity? After all, I was a pastor. I shared Jesus and the gospel with all sorts of people so that they could be here too. And you're going to put me there? You put the bus driver up in a palace? And he said, well, he said, pastor, he said, the bus driver, while he was doing his job, people were so afraid, they were praying that every time you got your mouth open, people were sleeping. Thankfully, that's not the way it works. But what a beautiful reminder to all of us, that because our sins are taken away, because we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ, we one day 
will enter through the gates of righteousness, through the pearly gates of heaven, all because of the works, the merits, the sufferings, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because of that, we can truly say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus.